The Oklahoma City Thunder nearly struck down the Dallas Mavericks last night. But really, it was just too much Luka Doncic, P.J. Washington at the end, and uh, Derek Lively the second. It, it, it was just too much for them, I think. Yeah, I, I think so. And I knew that the Oklahoma City Thunder would probably meet their demise in this particular round. Now, when they were going to do it, I didn't know. But I'm so glad that the Thunder gave a valiant effort. Valiant. I mean, to the point where they almost made the game seven. Almost. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think that this team superseded, that they're superseded my expectations for this season because for them to be number one seed in the West and then make it to the second round, being as young as they are, the 2025 season for them is going to be wide open. So I am excited about how their season ended. I did not want them to not um, – I wish they would have advanced. Of course, who doesn't? I mean, I'm quite sure the Mavs wish they would have advanced as well. So, but the fact that they didn't advance for me, for OKC, I feel like it was a bust season. So, there we have it. Okay. Well, I tell you one thing about those tables, they do be turning. And so, next year, yeah, when those guys take everything that they've learned from this playoff run mm -hmm. and apply it to next season, whether it's the regular season or the playoff run that they will make, yes. we may see a different outcome. Don't nobody want to go up against the OKC Thunder next season, right? No, because the only no. thing that they were missing was this playoff experience together exactly. as a unit. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. I would suspect, though, that they would add the Oklahoma City Thunder would add a veteran to their roster in the offseason. They're going to add somebody. Now, who that person will be, I don't know. But as young as they are, I hope they don't do too much changing of their roster, right? Because some changes happen. I think that it may be necessary. I'm wondering. We'll probably have, we'll talk about it in another um, podcast or a video. You guys will be on the lookout for that. But yeah, I just can't wait to see what their 2025 season looks like. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, Coach Mark Dagno, yes, coach of the year, but he mm -hmm. made some very questionable moves throughout the playoffs where he moved Josh Giddy to the bench in exchange for Isaiah Joe. Now, I stand behind him and his decision because Josh Giddy just wasn't locked in. He wasn't mm -hmm. locked in this playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Isaiah Joe was the perfect solution for them. He did give them some good offense and defense in game six. But Josh Giddy, now, he was supposed to be part of their core and someone that you can count on in the playoffs, and we didn't see that. In last podcast, you talked about waiting to see Jalen mm -hmm. Williams have his breakout game. I think he had a breakout game in game six. It just, unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and the Dallas Mavericks just overpowered them, especially right. in the paint, especially in the paint, because Derek Lively, the second, he had himself yep. a game. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that is something that they, that the Oklahoma City Thunder would look deep into for the season. This is no slight on Shed Hungry. Don't get me wrong. But again, this is his rookie season, right? And so with, again, it's all about gaining experience. Now they have more experience than they did when they, before they step into these playoffs and they'll know how to move forward as they navigate through their next playoff run, which I do believe like you will be 2025. So it's just, um, when you have firepower and experience like Luca, you know, like Kyrie, Luca gonna get it done. So it doesn't surprise me that the Mavs advanced. The surprising you know, and the shocker would have been for me if the Thunder advanced. Although I'm so glad that it wasn't a cakewalk, and I appreciate that they didn't get swept. They fought hard every game, and so yeah, you know, you win some, you lose some, and this just wasn't their time. So I'm okay. I appreciate Kyrie Irving saying that his series against the OKC Thunder was one of the hardest ones that he's, that he's played in. Now, if you think about Kyrie's career, wow. he's been through the trenches with the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, he did some work mm -hmm. with the Boston Celtics. And to say that this was the most difficult series for him, that says a lot about the young Thunder team. Yeah, I can understand that considering Kyrie is much older now too. So I'm quite sure that happened something to play and he is a different person I believe than he was when he played in the playoffs in previous seasons especially when he was younger leaving earlier so you know I can understand his outlook now is a lot different because of his experience because of who he is today and they did lock him up he did he did have to defer a lot so that's good to know you know and that's what I'm saying if 
this Oklahoma City team can just ex uh, enhance on what they've already set as their foundation, they're going to be unstoppable next season. So Yes, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you think the OKC Thunder missed Steven Adams in the middle? Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I would not be surprised if they figure out a way to get some type of presence like that on their roster for next season. That is what was missing, right? And um, if they had that type of experience, I don't know if Lively would have been able to just run amok as he did in, in several of this games this series. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and the Mavs were able to capitalize on the lack of talent in rim protection, I think. No slight to check. He is a rookie. So I just want to make sure I'm clear on that, right? I don't expect for him to know um, as much as a Stephen Adams would have known, you know? But And, mm -hmm. and Stephen Adams' girth and presence would have been nice, too. We just need, just need to express. Shet needs to put on at least 20 more pounds if he can. It would be helpful, you know? So... Yes, yes. Because when you look at Derek Lively's body structure, that can uh -huh. be Shet Holmgren uh, next season. Absolutely. You know, They're both. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that Lively is, he's not, he's not a Steve Adams body type, but he does appear to be a lot stronger, even though he's lean, you know, it's, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that I can't wait to see the body transformation. If he's able to do it, I don't know, maybe Shed Holmgren's body won't be able to transform. You never know. Right. But if he can just bulk up just a little bit, he'll be more of a force when it's coming to protect the rim. I think. Uh huh. Okay. Now for me, for the Dallas Mavericks, this feels like, a, se a season of redemption. If you think mm -hmm. about Kyrie Irving and everything that he's had to go through over the last at least three to four seasons, right? If you yeah. think about Derek Lively II and everything that he had to endure yeah. personally off the court, it mm -hmm. just gave me chills at the end of the game to see Luca embrace Kyrie and then Derek Lively point to the ceiling, like, you know, losing his mom and just feeling her mm -hmm. presence. That mm -hmm. it, it was just so powerful, and I just immediately started feeling like, okay, I want the Mavs to win the whole thing. Whether or not it's going to happen, I don't know, but it's a great story of redemption. Mm -hmm. In the moment, I got it. <laughs> you may not feel that way when the you know when you play West in conference finals, you know, but I can understand that. I think that it does feel good when you've gone through adversity to come out victorious is something that you're so passionate about. That feels good. And so I'm glad they were able to experience that as well. What I like about Kyrie currently, because I wasn't a fan of him when he previously, his run with the Mavs right now, I appreciate the fact that I believe he knows what his role is and he is not trying to do anything outside of that. This is Luca and he's very clear on that, right? And he knows how to come in and be the, uh, mm, the number two, if you will, to Luca and be successful. Because I was concerned at first. I'm like, how he going, you know, Kyrie could be the number one, I guess. I don't think Kyrie, you know, desires to do that in this stage of his career. And what he's doing right now with the Mavs, I think is more powerful. And I believe he he probably has more of a voice. I think he has more of a voice, you know, and, and he's respected too because the skill level is outstanding. So, and I believe Luca respects him as well. And I think that's just what makes it for a, a really cool pairing. And then we see how it's playing off in wins, which for their benefit, they dance into the Western Conference final. So, yeah. Yeah. When you're an NBA champion, it's easy. It's easy to risk. And a veteran is easy to be respected, especially on Kyrie's level. But, um, yeah. you know, I think um, looking forward for the Dallas Mavericks, whether or not they face the Denver Nuggets, or the Minnesota Timberwolves, it is going to be another long, yes. drawn-out, very physical yes. series. Yes. And I was thinking after the Mavs won, I said, whatever, to your point, who, whichever team they play up against in the West Conference Finals, the storylines will be amazing. Can you imagine Luka and Ant? That's a great storyline. Or Luka and Joker. Great storylines all together. So it, the the... Western Conference Finals matchup is going to be an amazing matchup, and the storylines that the uh, sports writers can write would be phenomenal, regardless of which team um, from the Timberwolves Nuggets series advance. It's going to be a great storyline. Yeah, especially with the way international 
uh, players yes. have taken off in the NBA. I mean, golly, mm-hmm. it's going to be. Ooh. Okay, so who's playing tonight? I know we have a set of Game 7s. Let's get into that real quick. Okay, so the first matchup for Game 7 today would be the Pacers and the Knicks. The game will be in Madison Square Gardens, and whoever wins this game will be going on to play the Boston Celtics. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> ah, okay, call it now. Who wins? Ah. Come, on. Come on, call it, call it. I don't know. I, the, the, I, I may not have been so uh, questionable on my thought process if Josh Hart didn't have that abdomen strain. That, for me, is like, what? Is OG playing? You know what? OG said he's going to ramp up, and he's questionable right now. He's a game-time decision. Yeah. And Josh Hart is experiencing pain when he sneezes, coughs, laughs, everything. So It's a uh, wrap. It's mm -hmm. a wrap. Oh, I don't know. Really? I'm going to go with the Pacers. I think the Pacers are going to upset. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going. I'm throwing it out there. I'm rooting for the Pacers. I'm rooting for the Pacers okay. because what we talked about in our previous uh, podcast, where we said really we would like to see, and I agree with you on this 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 thought process, a healthy team go up against the Boston Celtics. I don't want to see a hobbled Knicks team do it. Correct. I don't know. And that's why I'm pulling for the Pacers as well. As much oh, as I man, love man. what the New York Knicks have made of their season. It will not be orange and blue skies today in New York City. <laughs> the Pacers will be coming for the upset to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm going to stand on that. Oh, my God. A- a- in New York. <laughs> Where they have not won all, all playoffs. You know, oh, no. they have not won, right? So, yeah, I'm going for the Pacers. Oh, we. Oh, we. Well, I'm telling you, what's going to have to happen in order for the Pacers to pull this off? What they're going to have to do? Oh, it's very clear. Tyrese Halliburton and uh, Miles Turner, they're going to have to be the ones. And I know Neesmith and Nimhart are going to continue to apply pressure on yes. Jalen Brunson, especially if OG and Josh Hart are out. It's going to be a Jalen Brunson show. So it'll be easy to stop him yeah. today. And uh, yeah, I think the Pacers can pull it off. Right, right, right. And I'm going to need Obi Toppin not to even miss a step from the bench. He better not. That Obi Toppin we've been watching for the past uh, six games. I'm gonna need that Obi Toppin to show up tonight too. Mm-hmm. That one. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's been and and TJ, come on with your crafty <laughs> self. I'm gonna need you to do it too, right? <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be a good game. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's not a blowout. I don't want the Knicks to lose on a blowout. I don't want that. But to your point, it's going to be a Jalen Brunson show. And if Dante Divincenzo thinks he can get any points. He better start to, you know, raving his hand so Jalen Brunson can share the ball because it's going to mm. be a Jalen Brunson show. I agree, one hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then, and then the second matchup, seven game series as well, is the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. And uh, <sighs> yeah. I can't call it. I cannot call this one. But I'll tell you who I'm pulling for, though. I'm Ooh. pulling for Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray has pulled on my heartstrings ever since he cried in the bubble. I've been a Jamal Murray fan since then. <laughs> what? The bubble? <laughs> wow, yes, you reached. Yes. Yeah, that was a yes. that was a tough one. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. When he got injured, right? Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Oh, I was di- You know what though? That would that could have been the year that the Nuggets went all the way. You know, I remember that. Oh, that was hard. That was a hard watch. I agree. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to root for the Nuggets as well. I'm rooting for the Nuggets as well. And you know, okay. the Nuggets have not lost at home during this series. So <laughs> it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for the Wolves. This I know. One's gonna, yeah, I don't I, I know. And the and the blowout that happened in game six was just, that the Wolves mm. spanked on uh the Nuggets. What have you what have me thinking I'm crazy He's going with the Nuggets, right? I'm like maybe right. I should do the Timberwolves, right? It doesn't even make sense, but now nah, you know. Spanking have happened <laughs> all series long in this series and other series. So just because you got spanked one one game don't mean you're going to get spanked next. Maybe doing the spanking. So, you know, I just, I'm going to go with the Nuggets. I really am. I don't see Nikola Jokic 
going out. I just don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. Well, the way he stood all of the fourth quarter in game six, and he had that like stare onto the court. I said, oh, we are about to see a Nikola Jokic we have not seen before for game oh, seven. God. I know, I know. I can see him saying, I got this. Uh -huh. and, and if Jamal Murray can get him, oh my God. I mean, there's so many people that can really walk on the Nuggets. Let me think about what that looks like for the Timberwolves. Ant, okay. Cat, maybe. Foul trouble. Rudy. Cat. Foul <laughs> Guaranteed. Trouble. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yes. Rudy Gobert Connolly played in game six, so I'm quite sure he'll play in game seven. Oh, it's I'm gonna going be a for the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, I'm looking for Michael Porter Jr. to find his shot. He's been off at least two to three games. Jamal yeah. Murray. He, Jamal, first of all, Jamal Murray, he loves this type of pressure. You know, this is he's showing yeah, us time his and time games. again. Yeah. yeah, this is this is where he thrives. And I'm on I his agree. I'm on his train. I just Denver Nuggets right. tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, and not and only that, <laughs> and not only that, if you need a clutch shot, Jamal Murray will show up. Yeah. Proven that multiple times this season. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to go, and I can't wait to see what Aaron Gordon, you know, because Aaron Gordon's one of my favorites as well. I like Aaron Gordon, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Girl, this game is going to be a mess. I think I probably will hold my breath for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to be able to breathe for the next two games. You know what? And I'm telling you, I'm not leaving the couch, and I am completely firm on that. It's happening. <laughs> Snacks and drinks will be all around me. And I'm going to get up and go to the bathroom. And come I'm on back. Get, and come on back. It's going to be couch potato. Yes. 